Welcome to my kitchen. We're continuing that theme of things I never thought I would eat again. Today we're making onion rings. Now would be a great time to go ahead and click subscribe while I get my apron on. I'm starting with one white onion. White onions are the strongest onion flavor, so if you like a more mild onion, a yellow onion would also work. And I'm just going to remove the peel, which is pretty much the most difficult part of this entire process, trying to get that outer layer off. And then I just want to slice it into rings. Um, as evenly as I can, just so that they cook evenly. I have this nifty little holder here that not only helps me keep it from sliding around, but also helps me um, make even rings. Or, except that I don't cut straight. <laughs> sort of. And then I'm just going to separate them. So you can make a lot of onion rings out of one onion. One onion, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, you pay, what, $10 for an order of onion rings in the... It's one onion. It's less. one onion and it's less. like less than $2. Yeah. <laughs> and you know it's safe because there's no cross-contamination in your own kitchen. <laughs> or theoretically. <laughs> all right, all my little rings separated out. I'm going to get my cutting board out of the way so that I can mix up my batter. Now that my onions are cut, I'm going to start my skillet heating. I have just about a half of an inch of oil in there on about a medium flame. My two bowls for my batter. I'm using the same um, all-purpose baking mix that we mixed up when we did the, the um, coconut shrimp. And I wanted to show you another variation of that same um, use for the same um, mix here. I am going to put just a little bit in the first bowl that I'm going to use to make sure that my onions are dry when I put them in the batter. To the second bowl, I'm putting about half a cup of my mix here. I will include the um, recipe for this mix in the description of the video along with the steps for how to do these onion rings. Um, in my coconut shrimp, I made a beer batter, and I mentioned that you could do uh, like a club soda or any other non-flavored carbonated beverage. I'm using a tonic water today, and I'm just going to mix that in um, about equal parts until it is a thin batter. I don't want it so thick that it clumps when it, I put my onions in it, but I also don't want it so runny that it just runs off and doesn't adhere. So it needs to be a little thinner than um, like cake batter. And we want the carbonation because that's what gives us the air and the crispiness when we fry our onions. So this is still just a little too thick. Yeah. So it's combination. There's um, baking soda and baking powder in the mix, then it reacts with the, the carbonation in the soda here, the beverage, that creates all of that good crispy bubbles. Okay, and because I didn't use beer, uh, as I mentioned in the coconut shrimp video, I'm going to add some flavor because there is currently no seasonings in this. I'm putting in about a half a teaspoon of both onion powder and garlic powder just to give us a little more flavor in the batter. Woo! Got a little aggressive. Good and mixed up there. So now I'm going to take my onions and I'm going to just run them through the flour so that they're um, nice and dry. 
dip them into my batter. So it, it coats, but not clumpy, doesn't run off, and right into my hot oil. Again, we don't want to overcrowd the pan. Just a little, another little one here, fit in the middle. And now we're just gonna let those fry until they start to be golden brown around the edges and then flip them over. You can see the um, air bubbles as it's frying around the edges. <laughs> We did a test of this yesterday and what happened? The yellow onion wasn't um, oniony enough. The, the texture was great, but the no onion, no onion flavor. <laughs> and I actually wanted to taste onions. <laughs> yeah, I can smell it today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no... Yesterday I smoked no onion while you were here. Yep. Beautiful, nice golden brown. I'm just gonna move these to a baking sheet covered with parchment paper, because we know I love my parchment paper. Um, I'm putting it in the oven on about 175 just to keep them warm as I'm working. Oh, you know what I should do? No. I should, I should try and see if that these crisp up convection. Why not? Shoot, only the upper oven does convection. Okay, right. we can do this. We know this way it works. Let's see if that way it works. Convection, 425 sounds good. And then I'm gonna put my lower oven just back to 175. And that way I don't have to stand here and flip them either. What do I do with my tongs? Those are beautiful. Okay, so I'm turning this off. All right. So the fried ones turned out beautiful, but now I need to do an experiment to see if I can air fry these. So I've got my baking sheet with parchment paper. I'm just gonna use um, some avocado oil on my parchment paper. Make that look a little prettier. Or prettier. Okay, so then I'm just gonna dip them and then see what happens. Cause you know, I'm impatient.
Yay. No. All right. <laughs> so experiment not successful. Error fryer, not so pretty, and no comparison here. To my uh, onion rings, I'm gonna add just a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. This is Bois, Bois Life brand Parmesan cheese, and I'm just gonna grate a little bit over the top. For just a little extra flavor. Absolutely not necessary, but oh, so yummy. A little more. A little more? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that good? Yep. Well, these feel sad, so I'll give them a little. Are you serious? Don't give well, them a We've got to be fair taste testing, right? I mean, maybe they're just ugly and they taste great. Here we go. I will benefit of the doubt here. Yeah. Not exciting at all. It's awful. <laughs> really sad. Experiment failed. Okay. Now, for these. You can see all the air bubbles in there. Nice and golden brown. Fluffy, crusty. Oh, man. I can hear the crunch. Mm. Mm-hmm. Success. Gluten-free onion rings. You can still have the things you used to enjoy. See you next time.